Yeah, as you all heard this morning, uh, the CEO of the UCG, Jos Aert, uh, told you already th something about this. Uh, well, in, in the Netherlands, we, we say hockey and we think about field hockey. So that's on a grass field, <laughs> on grass with a ball and not on ice, as the Americans and Canadians might think. Um, and indeed, we uh, looked at the association between um, vibration, vibration and hypertrans disease in this population. We have the same complex of interest to declare. Well, vibration is frequently suggested as risk factor for Duperton's disease. And uh, in all these papers, uh, the focus is mainly on occupational exposure to vibration. And that's strange because uh, during leisure and sports activities, the hands can also be exposed to vibration. So we thought, well, is there exposure to vibration in elderly male field hockey players associated with DD? Let's find out. 170 elderly male field hockey players um, were willing to participate in the study. And as control group, we used the data of 250 controls from my colleague Lanting. And we excluded all manual workers and all controls who were exposed to vibration. So we ended up with 150, uh, 40, uh, 45 hockey players and uh, 58 controls. And these groups are very unbalanced. There were many differences between, between the groups. So we matched them and we ended up with 40 pairs of data, so 80 participants. And these are the things that we measured. Uh, of course, the presence of DD, uh, the disease severity, the demographics, uh, lifestyle factors, health factors, and vibration. And vibration in the literature is mostly uh, measured dichotomously, yes or no, but we uh, recorded it as hours a week times years. Well, propensity score matching, that's what we did to balance the groups. And we used the variables age, diabetes, smoking, and alcohol for this. The caliper width was uh, uh, zero times the standard deviation. And the type of matching was one-to-one -one matching without replacement for those interested. <laughs> and uh, the effect of vibration on the presence of DD uh, was determined using a multiple logistic regression analysis in which the effect was controlled for the logit of the propensity score. So I think that many people are not really uh, familiar with the propensity score matching. So I'll show you um, um, uh, the, the, the descriptive statistics of my data set before the propensity score matching analysis. And as you can see in this column, um, the participants were different, the two groups were different on almost every variable. And what you do with propensity score matching is that you try to make these group more equal. So now I will give you the same uh, table, but now after the propensity score matching. And as you can see, many of the differences disappeared. You also lost many cases, but that is always the case with matching. And the only differences that are still here are probably what the ones uh, that are related to the exposure, so the group. So first we did a multiple logistic regression analysis inserting vibration as dichotomous factor. And again, we have lots of numbers, but we focus on these one. And as you can see, the odds rate CO4 vibration was 3.95 with a significant P value. And we uh, did exactly the same, but now we entered vibration as continuous factor. And again, this effect sustained. So we still see a significant effect of vibration with an odds ratio of 1.006. So based on these data, we can say that vibration is significantly associated with DD in this sample. And we were able to uh, show a dose response relation, which is in line with some previous studies. But we have to say that the role of concomitant hand trauma remains unclear. Well, we did inquire ben about hand trauma, but most of the participants had difficulties with remembering what exactly happened and which hand or which finger was injured. So we thought that this variable was that kind of unreliable that we did not uh, use it in the analysis. Well, exposure to vibration. Um, in, in the Netherlands, field hockey playing is a, a very elitist sport. So um, it made uh, the, the, the field hockey players a very interesting group to uh, investigate, uh, since almost uh, every participant in this group was a white collar worker. So um, it's a very homogeneous kind of vibration exposure group. So that's one of the strengths of the studies. And we've uh, physically examined all participants uh, with uh, experienced MDs. 
And another strength is that we uh, balance the groups using propensity score matching. The limitation of the study is that uh, many variables were uh, gathered using an interview, so recall bias might be present. And uh, we have to say that uh, since we do not have any biomechanical information on what happens exactly in the hand during uh, field hockey playing, it might be that the effect that we witness uh, might also be caused by uh, hand trauma, and not only by vibration itself. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.